Hi friends, welcome back to Dart and Flutter vocabulary series. In today's video, we will be discussing Dart Generics. So, the Dart Generics are used for applying stronger type checks at compile time. So, what they do, they actually are used to enforce type safety in the code. And with the help of generics, you can write reusable classes, methods, and functions. So what is type safety is? Type safety is a concept that allows in a memory block to contain one type of data. So this concept is very similar to uh, other languages like Java generics and C templates. You can read more about them here. And so in the Dart collections, um, uh, that collection can hold different kind of different type of data types in one collection. So here is an example. So in a Dart list, it can hold uh, like the integer and here a string and the double. So it, it doesn't really perform the the check here. So uh, uh, so that's why generics are needed to uh, to uh, make the type check stronger so that it doesn't fail on the uh, runtime if a particular type of data is needed and something else came to, to make your code more compile um, like faster and it doesn't fail we need the type safety so how will we declare the type safe collection a, it's a uh, the generics uh, uses these angular brackets to declare the parameters like what kind of data type it needs to be uh, parameterized so how does it this is called something called type variables notations to restrict the type of data and it could be used either the single letter names or the descriptive names so for single the popular dis single letter names are e for elements so usually we use it in the lists and k is used to represent keys in like uh, data structures like map and this is v is the key value pairs so k, k is the key and v is the value and r usually we use for return type and there is one more uh, that i haven't mentioned here is used letter t and that also is used for the type of the data so here in this particular example i have shown uh, two ways of doing it in a real example so in this example you have a product class and say product have id price in double and string a constructor and a string a two string overriding that simply says what this object is nothing fancy here and the inventory it just has the amount like how much amount it is and i'm saving my this information in a hash map so that's the example i've taken to explain this concept of using the single variable the type variable as a single letter or the descriptive name so here i have a store class in store class so there are two type of uh, store class i have written the inside code the internal code is very same it's everything is same here however you see the signature of this class is different here it uses p and i which is a single letter type variables and in, in this case it uses my product and my inventory which is descriptive words to explain this uh, so now uh, what this classes does uh, uh, classes do it has hash maps which has a catalog and uh, the catalog the keys are the products and i is the inventory and when you update the inventory for the product as a key it updates the amount and for printing it it just goes over the keys and print the particular product and its inventory information so right now i'm using these two stores here so i first i create my list here product list i have just two items actually here and now i'm updating these my inventory of the uh, sorry not the list i just creating the products here two products milk and bread and then and i'm updating them in my inventory here and i'm printing them so for the very same product for both cases so here i'm demonstrating like how they are very same so either you can use the single letter or the descriptive uh, letter for the classes it's gonna be same you can use it as a, your use case uh, uh, ask you to do so do you see there's the same um, output for the both now how does it used uh, being uh, the generics are being used for code reused uh, uh, so for generic methods and functions um, so in this case we are continuing on the same example and now I want to write the method or other function uh, to get the 
last item of a list. So now here uh, I'm writing this generic method here. So as you see here, so it's the last item and it's returning the T and I want it to return me the item, the last item. So it's taking the T variable, um, the type variable and it's of T type and the T local variable and returning the T. So what it is now this code, this last item uh, function can be used for different type of list, list, different data types of list. So here in this example, I'm creating the same list that we have here, two items and now uh, so now my store has products list which is returning the list of the my products and I want the last item so it will so now this type is a product type and it's returning me the product now in the another list I have a list of integers and I'm using this is called a constructor um, from parameters uh, this is the one way you can use generics to create the list and here I'm using the same last item and I'm printing it. So as you see in the output, the last item of the product type is the it pr putting the price, um, the product information right here as the last item is the bread. And the last item of the int is the five. So as you see, there are two different data types like integer and the product, but you can reuse the very same uh, function to achieve uh, to do implement uh, the last item method for different data types. Now how about classes? So what are generic classes? So generic classes are used to restrict the type of values that you can pass uh, to a class. So what it is is for example I have a fresh produce class and I want it to just accept the product type not anything else. So in this case I will use syntax this one like a t extends product the object or the uh, the parameter type I wanted to accept sorry data type I wanted to accept and now this thing like to string method if I'm printing the T so it should print the instance of type product after running it so this is the example um, here I'm using fresh produce and this is product type and which is spinach so here it's all good now I'm passing it without a product and it will work too in this case too. However, if I'm putting the object or another type of object could be string, int, anything, it will give me a compile time error. And for first these two, it will simply print the instance of type product from right here because it's a product type. Now, uh, one more case that uh, we use generics in is it the uh, to make the collection literals type safe. So most uh, popular collection literals in Dart are list queue, asset and map. So I will give show you very quick examples of um, implementing the generics in these cases, which are very similar. Uh, and you can run these things in Dartpad. You can simply copy paste this code, the in inside code in your Dartpad main void main method, and you can try out on yourself. So in the this uh, list example, I have a list of one that is a one uh, integer. It's a list of integers, and this is being uh, constructed using parameterized constructor. So this is my constructor, and it's parameterized. Means I am have this parameter given to it. It's saying it give me a list of type int. So that is what is parameterized constructor means. Now I'm afterwards I'm adding two and three two. So now you see in list there are three items one two three, and now I want to add a para, um, the uh, item for decimal zero, which is a, a double type. So since this list is of int type, it will throw a compile time exception here. So you can uh, uncomment it in your Dart uh, pad, and you uh, and you can see it how it works. Now in the queue, queue is the same and where in queue I'm using a different data type, a double and I'm trying to add it the string and this is where it will bail out, uh, compile, it will throw a compile time exception, sorry compile time error. And now this is set and in set also you can use the constructor, uh, the parameterized constructor, this is the way to do it and again 
the different data type will throw exception and so in the map. And so in the map, let's I will show you this code running in the dot pad. So you can go here and go here dot pad in the main and you simply copy paste this code here. You can remove this code and there you go and run. There you go. So what we did is we have a map that has one is the key and dot is my um, the value and the map two the second element key is two and the flutter is the value and now and here I'm just going over all the entries and printing its key and value. Now let's see what happens if I remove the uh, this one. So you see this red mark came in here and it, the error is thrown right here which says a value of type int cannot be assigned to a variable of type string. So why it's saying a string? Because I said it so here that this is a string. So this is why we use that's how we achieve the type safety using generics in Dart. Uh, so that's uh, for this article and again the source code is available in my github repo is right here and here's a link to dartpad as well in case you don't know where to find it and th here's a link to Dart Dart Generix, the official documentation. So th this is it for this article and I will see you in the next video and let me know if you want me to make videos about a particular topic that you like and I'm not sure how to uh, proceed with that I will be happy to explore for you and um, we'll make a video about this so till uh, I will see you guys in the next video till then take care and thank you very much